Well, hello there. Welcome, this is page 465 in Geometry, Module 3, Topic 1, Lesson 2, and we're talking about the conditions to show that two triangles are similar. We're in Activity 2, which in the previous video, previous page 464, maybe find it, we're talking about the side, side, side triangle congruence. No, I'm sorry, I keep saying congruence in these videos. Triangle similarity. Similarity means the same shape, different sizes are possible. Well, in order to answer the questions on page 465, we actually need to go back and look at the triangles that you created or the triangle you created on the previous page. And so have some stuff to write with, some highlighters, and while I'm looking for it, you're going to need a protractor. And so that protractor is mainly for the measurement, but it is also for the angle measures we're going to use. As I read what's on page 465, what I notice is measure the angles and sides of triangle D prime, E prime, F prime and triangle DEF. Are the two triangles similar and explain your reasoning? So in order for us to show that two shapes are similar, all of their angles must be matching to, you know, from shape uh, pre-image to shape image, and then corresponding angles must be congruent. So piece by piece, pair by pair, D and D prime must be the same angle. And I did measure it. I came up with an angle of 46 degrees. Let's actually start there. So in order to do this, the, the, the way that lets the protractor be effective, that triangle on the inside is just too small, too small. And so in order to do that, I have to extend the lines, use the straight edge of the, of the protractor, or if you have a ruler, but use the straight edge of the protractor to draw this like all three sides of the triangle much, much longer. It's okay if they overlap across the way. They really should be erased when we're done, although I'm not going to erase. Let's go ahead and see what the measure of angle E is. Now, if I take the circle center point of the protractor, that has to go on point E. And I should try to make that angle be exactly in the middle. And automatically, instinctively, I lined up the zero with that pencil line that I drew because that pencil line is the edge of that angle. If I had positioned the protractor a little bit tilted, that would still work, but I would have to like find two numbers and then find the difference between those two numbers. This is just the easier way to do it. Center of the protractor on the angle, line up the black line, the zero line, with our pencil line, and then count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Always count it from zero. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 105. It's about 105, maybe 106 if I'm being a little bit picky. But I'm going to go back to page 465, and I'm going to write down that angle E is a 105 degree angle. Now, one of the facts about triangles is that all three angles in a triangle on a flat surface add up to 180 degrees. So if I do, hey Siri, what's 180 minus 105 minus 46? Answer is 29. Okay, I figured out by calculation that the measure of angle F should be 29 degrees. And I'm proposing that these two triangles are created to be similar. So if angle F is 29 degrees, then angle F prime should also be 29 degrees. Let's just see how well and how accurately I was able to create the shape. Once again, I'm lining up my side right here this is meant to be a double sized shape and yeah i've got a little human error i'm off by five degrees from my calculation because if i go out on the edge 10 20 30 31 32 33 i'm off by four degrees by my calculation the way i made it the answer the true answer should be 29 because that's how the shapes are preserving angle size as we make similar triangles the last part I saved is to figure out the measure of EF, and then we'll double it to figure out the measure of E prime, F prime. That was the relationship between these two triangles. This one, the reason why I wrote 2X, 2Y, and 2Z, is all of the sides are twice as big. So if I've measured EF, again, I'm going to use centimeters. I'm going to use centimeters where every tally on the centimeter is actually a millimeter mark or a 0.1 centimeter amount. They're the same thing. So zero goes on angle E, and then counting out 10, 20, it's not quite 30, come back a little bit, maybe 29, 2.9, maybe 2.8, right? It's about 2.8 centimeters. Let me get my, the color. Again, if you're doing math and color, that's really, really impressive, very helpful. 2.8 centimeters is the length of the small side, 
by the way that I constructed that second triangle, the E prime to F prime should be twice as big. Hey Siri, what's 2.8 times 2? 2.8 2 times 2 is 5.6. Okay, so I'm looking for a 5.6 centimeter measurement. So when I take my protractor and I line it up, put the zero of the protractor on E prime, and count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 is exactly in the middle, 50, about 55. And I could say, just because of construction purposes, it is meant to be 5.6 centimeters. Three pairs, that's, that's it for number three. That's the whole thing. Measure and compare and more or less prove. Angles are the same and the sides have this one to two, this doubling relationship, and they do. Number four, three pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. Determine whether this is sufficient information to conclude that the triangles are similar. Three pairs of corresponding sides. We have that. We have D prime E prime over DE. That equals two because it is 3.6 over 1.8. We have D prime F prime over DF also equals two because 7.6 divided by 3.8 is 2. We have E prime F prime over E F equals 2. And so when they say three pairs of corresponding sides are proportional, we mean this. We mean one pair of sides written as a fraction. So side D E to side D prime E prime. When you write that as a fraction and you calculate that fraction, we should compare it to the other two fractions of the sides. So D prime F prime, E prime F prime, we're comparing them to their corresponding sides. And when you make those fractions, you're making a proportion. And if the proportions are equal, equal to two, then yes, this is an example of side, side, side similarity. And we'll abbreviate that like this, S, 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 similarity. That means you have to find three sides that correspond, and then when you make fractions, that's the proportion word, they are equal fractions, equal proportions. At that point, the triangles are similar. Let's go to the number five. Let's put this in practice, number five and number six. Determine whether triangle UVW is similar to triangle XYZ. And if so, use symbols to write the similarity statement. You're going to practice all of this when you do your online homework. You're going to practice this when you do the pages homework for this one. This is an important skill to have right here. You only get to use side, side, side similarity when you've made the fractions of the sides to check that they match. One thing to do, though, is to kind of know you're comparing the right numbers. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to start with finding the smallest side of both triangles. And it looks like 24 and 16 are the smallest sides, the VW side and the YZ side. So like the letters in the similarity statement are important as well. If angle Z is last, we're kind of saying that angle Z is going to be the same size as angle W. Although this is not about angles, it's about identifying corresponding sides, corresponding vertices. Okay, so back to it. We need a fraction. 24 over 16. Hey Siri, what's 24 over 16? 24 over 16 is 1.5. Okay, that's our first potential scale factor. So uh, to take this triangle and make it bigger, we have to multiply 16 by the number 1.5 and we get 24. Let's check that with the large side, the largest side of the triangle. So largest side is 36, that's UW. And if I'm looking, according to the, the similarity statement, I should look for XY. Uh, XY is not the largest side because 24 is larger. So there is an issue. No, no, I, I have it right. I have it right. UW, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. UW and XZ. Those sides should correspond, and they do. 24 and 36, we can make a fraction out of those. I'm going to go big number on top per the usual, and then 24 on the bottom. So that's this 36 divided by this 24. Hey Siri, what's 36 divided by 24? 36 
six divided by twenty four is one point five. Hey, this is some consistency. You can't stop here though. You have to make sure that all three sides. It is the side 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 similarity theorem. You have to check three fractions. So we check the two small sides together to get the fraction. We check the two large sides together. Now we got to check the two medium sides. And the two medium sides are thirty three divided by 22. Again, I'm going with the format of large number on top, small number on the bottom. Hey Siri, what's 33 divided by 22? 33 divided by 22 is 1.5. We did it. It works. Determine whether triangle UVW is similar to triangle XYZ, and if so, use symbols to write a similarity statement. So they are similar, and the way to write them is the triangle UVW is similar to triangle XYZ by side, 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 similarity. Done. I guess technically this should go after all of the math that justifies it. Describe how you can use transformations to determine whether the two triangles are similar when all pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. You know, honestly, if you were to use a translation and then a rotation, you could set this small triangle so that it's in a way that a dilation would show us that the small triangle can dilate to the big triangle. So I'd say in a sequence, or use a sequence of translations, Let's see, it goes UVW, so it's going around like that. And then XYZ is also going around like that. So I don't need to do a reflection. I had to think about, do I have to flip it? And I don't think I need to flip it. I just need a translation and rotation to set up a dilation. And the dilation shows similar. Ooh, similarity is a better word. Boom, done, roasted. That's page 465. We have two things now that we can use to justify triangles are similar. We have angle-angle similarity. If you know two of the angles of one triangle correspond and are congruent to two angles on the other triangle, then the two triangles are similar. This is only for triangles, by the way. This does not work for quadrilaterals. We have side-side-side similarity, where if you know all three sides of one triangle and you can make them into a fraction, where the top number, bottom number, right, but all of those fractions are equal, side-side-side similarity is another way to establish the triangles are similar. Thank you so much for watching Activity 2, page 465. On the next page, we go into Activity 3. Spoiler alert, it's the third and final criterion, side-angle side. Stick around. Thanks for like, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next episode.